All right, guys, red alert to World Cup action coming at you. We are here in the finals, the moment we've all been waiting for. We got Marco in red out of Finland, uh, the final boss, a.k.a. the GOAT, up here on the top right. He's facing off against Kian in yellow out of Russia, the Octo Kid. This is traditional Yuri's Revenge here. It is best of seven. We got a small map, a small pool of different maps we're cycling through. The Yuri faction is off. We had Kian veto that. Best of seven, you guys know how it goes. And a quick reminder, guys, uh, this action today is going to be rolling at you for quite a while because we're running this finals, and then we are getting right into the Blitz finals after this. So here's the brackets on the screen, guys, for the Yuri's Revenge. Uh, again, Kian beating Luke and the legend to be here. Marco beating Tim. And this is it, guys. The winner taking home the crown for our 2023 World Cup. Snark, how are you feeling? How are you feeling about this one? Well, we do have a Soviet versus Soviet matchup here on time, Bjorn. Uh, traditionally, I believe it's more of an allied map. Both of these players do prefer the Soviet faction, though. It's interesting because it is a big macro map here because it's you start far away from your opponent. Rushing, early pressure, not really a serious option here. So I feel like Marco's macro in general is a little bit better than QN's, and that might play to his strengths. On the other hand, the options for expansion and splitting here are huge. If you're good at splitting like QN is, right, his APM is nuts, his control of splits is insane, then it definitely plays into his strengths as well. So I think both players have their advantages on this map here and there, and we're already seeing QN moving his MCV to the next ore patch. It's going to come down to heavy, heavy eco at the start, and from there on we're going to see several war factories. It's going to come down to macro and splits. Yeah, we've talked about this map before. Um, you know, we've seen it throughout this tournament. And we've talked about just being a heavy allied favored map just because of um, the ability of Rockies and things like that to move the lanes, the, the areas, to the zones are so spread out. There's so many features to get around. Uh, and that way allied, um, you know, being able to use their Rockies and things like that, using their speed a little bit to their advantage. And also, of course, just a map like this that plays a little bit slower. Uh, you expect to get into a mid-late game. Of course, allied always going to be better the longer they can go here. So both players going Soviet have been interesting here. Um, ooh. And, uh, my, uh, ooh, drone in on the top right. So Marco needs to get a service depot out he should be have plenty of time here um yeah a bit surprising you know marco of course uh heavy soviet preferred player i'm surprised you know kian might have thought about allied on this map but ultimately probably just scared of sending his grizzlies into marco's rhinos i mean uh facing facing marco soviet uh is always a little bit scary but very tough with allied absolutely no joke now getting drones in and use revenge is much harder than red alert 2 you the the miners do one shot the drones and Kuhn being able to get it in there means he had perfect micro with that drone. We're going to see Marco attempting to do the same here. As the miner is dumping is the point when the miner can't actually shoot. And that is one of the perfect moments to try and drone a miner here. Marco now retreating with that drone. Not, not going to really attempt to get it in here. On the flip side, again, macro is going to be the name of the game, uh, of the game on Tiburon here. So we see tons of miners, tons of war factories. And we're going to see who could out macro who. Marco even destroying the bridge, delaying any splits from QN, knowing that his advantage here is the macro game, not the micro game. He's going to try and keep it straightforward, win the big tank fight, and not try to outsplit QN. QN is just so good with those splits and the APM. Yeah, interesting to see Marco, yeah, taking that bridge out to try to slow things down even more. And with the macro, you know, talking about that, the build order, the build speed. And of course, early on, um, you know, early on, it's, it's just, it's pretty simple. You, if you know your build order, you know where you're going to go, you know what you're going to do. But as the game starts progressing, that player who can keep up the macro while they're microing, while they're dealing with their army, while they're attacking, uh, those are the kind of things where you're going to see Marco just slowly pull ahead as you start watching these early engagements. If you keep an eye on the backside, you'll see Marco start you know, t generally progressing just a little bit more more and that just comes from sheer reps and time spent marco um you know kind of interesting to talk about these players marco of course obviously the goat and there's a reason for that you know his domination of the game and the time period that he's dominated on which of course has been years and years now uh i mean he's been playing the game for more than a decade right snark yeah yeah marco has been i mean marco's on this game as, as far as i know as like almost as long as it's been out he he did appear all of a sudden and dominate all of a sudden back in the good old days, but uh, but yeah, he's yes. been around forever and he's been the goat forever since 2006. Six says two. Sanders. So yeah, <laughs> so two. <laughs> that's why Marco's the name you know, and that's why it's exciting to see Kian in here, the Octo Kid. Uh, this kid, you know, he's 17 years old now. He's only really been on the scene for about a year and a half. Um, so Kian's rise to be here in this game is obviously very, very impressive, but. Um, 
you know, there's something to be said for, you know, the fresh blood, the innovation that Kian brings, but of course there's something to be said for Marco's uh, cold-blooded nature, his iron-clad features uh, that come from playing the game for more than a decade. So uh, we'll see what happens here. First engagement, Mar um, uh, sentry gun, nice sentry gun from Marco. Uh, Marco Marco now with Let's desolators. Look at this Ooh, Kian needs to be careful pushing here. in into the desolators and the oh. fodder and the sentry guns. I don't feel like this is Kian's move, even though Kian did have more tanks than Marco. Can he come out oh. on top of this engagement? Looks like he, he is going to successfully. Oh, oh. oh my god. What just happened? Marco had the had the, the desolators, the sentry guns, and Kian with that incredible unit control clicking down those things. Kian rolls through. Kian rolls through yeah. Marco. That is 1-0 for the Octo Kid in a very surprising manner, I must say. Yeah, so one up for Kian. Um, yeah, and that, that does surprise me a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so being up on War Factory, up on tanks, I mean, the tank advantage there in that battle, um, I mean, well, there's a couple things. One, he had a tank advantage, but Marco had those desolators. He had the sentry guns. He had the defensive advantage. And, of course, he's Marco. So, uh, I mean, it, I, it's not like Kian had twice as many rhinos. So, obviously, you know, unit control and micro in those positions, uh, any of you guys who don't play the game competitively or, you know, watch from our point of view, it's difficult to really appreciate. It kind of looks like, oh, you smash your tanks into each other and flip a coin to see who wins. Uh, but if you watch, if you ever get the chance, you know, Marco and Kian, they both stream from their point of view, to watch in those battles how many clicks, how many decisions are being made. Uh, it makes you really appreciate kind of the art of the tank battles in this game. And obviously, if we went back and watched that and we put them side by side, you know, you'd be able to see the the decisions that Kian was making in the battle that allowed him to pull ahead. So, um, all right, over to point number two. Uh, Snark, talk to us about this map. Dan River, a uh, pretty new map by uh, the map maker of the year. Uh, I, I don't know how to, I really don't know how to pronounce his name. But it's P-O-L-Y-E. Uh, P-O-L-Y-E. And uh, he has been producing maps that have just, you know, one after another, got into QM. He has beautiful decoration and beautiful, uh, just, they play well. They play really well. So this map, you have text in the corner, you have a power plant and an oil in the corners, the way Ivor likes to start off his blitz map. I like that. And one oil, one power. That's the way life should be. I like that. Ooh, yeah, minor a few gets garrisons in. around the map. Ooh. Kewen with the drones today. Kian, not easy two. to do in Use Revenge and not easy to do versus a player like Marco. That oh, really oh, is annoying in Use Revenge. Oh, I thought Marco was AFK for a second. Okay, so he does see it. Yeah, so, and you guys, you know, early on Soviet for Soviet, that's like, that's a big thing. The drones, I mean, little things like that, you know, getting your drones in, doing those little things, that's what's going to give you that inch that puts you ahead by inches. And in a, you know, Soviet for Soviet, tank for tank, it makes a big difference as you get into the mid game. So uh, little stuff like that can definitely, um, can definitely help. So very similar here. We see both players um, building off their, their oils in, uh, in opposite corners here. Um, yeah, I got a little bit of landscaping here from Marco on the top right. Uh, yeah, so for again, you guys, uh, you guys just tuning in here. So this is the best of seven for Yuri's Revenge. This is the World Cup Finals for these two in the Pro Division. And right after this, we are getting into Blitz. So we're going to be running the Blitz. They're both, they both are undefeated in the Blitz bracket. They're both in the Pro Division Finals for that. We're running that right after this. So if you're Blitz fans, stick around. Um, all right, so Marco coming down now pretty even so far. Marco a little bit out tanked here. Yeah, but he's pushing in and map control. What a huge deal that is, right? If you're, if you have map control, you control the pace of the game. Even if your player out, the other player out tanks you. If you're controlling the the map, he can't really go in for an attack. So constant pressure, constant moving of the tanks, constant framing and deciding and trying to position yourself better. And the more decisions you're forcing your opponent to make the more chances are he will make a mistake. And look, Marco, we're paying that one tank. That's a little bit low health. Uh, <laughs> on point and uh, interesting. Marco looking a little bit Latoffy here, but taking up very quickly, bringing out the Desolators. Queuing on the same thing. It is a small map with not a huge amount of money. So you do want to take up earlier than other maps. Three War Factories and the tech here for Marco. The Battle Lab is out. And Kewen doing the same thing as well. I feel like Marco just a little bit ahead there on the speed of the tech. And the Kirov is out. Yeah, a little bit ahead on the tech. He's going to get that first Kirov advantage. We should see an Iron Curtain advantage here from uh, from Marco as well. Kian, of course, on Battle Lab as well. So we'll see the Iron Curtains from both players shortly here. Desolators for Desolators. But Kian's got a few drones in to clear out those Desolators. Ah, not able to get all the Desolators there. Oh, uses the <laughs> using the Kirov oh, to take out those Desolators. Oh, he kills his own Desolator Kirov. <laughs> 
Yeah, nice sentry uh, gun. Kieran, wow, great use of the decimal yep. from Kieran. Now he's going to push into these miners. Marco moving his decimal into position Ooh. to help here. Is it going to be enough? It looks like Marco's going to come out on top here from this engagement. Very, very close. But Marco does defend successfully. Kieran needs to back up. But the reinforcements are coming in. That Kirov needs to head towards Kieran's base. But the flak tracks are already out. Marco's going to keep that Kirov safe until he could pop the IC, kill the anti air, and then hopefully bring in that Kirov to close in the game. A strategy we've seen many, many times. Keep the Kirov alive until the IC is ready. Pop the IC, kill the anti air, have the Kirov finish off the base here. And yeah. uh, yeah, Kieran no also with his own IC. No reason, yeah, no reason to waste that Kirov. So you see him yeah, trying to bait those flag tracks out a little bit here, but it is taking quite a bit of flak, and you see Kian doing a good job protecting those flag tracks. Oh, yeah, that Kirov. the tank numbers. Why is Kian so ahead on tanks here? Well, what is going Yeah, what's what did the Octo Kid eat for breakfast? You see Marco. Marco's starting to go broke. I'm an eye on Marco's money here. I did just see him starting to bottom out for a second there. Marco's struggling a little bit. Needs to get some sentry guns involved here. That Kirov. Oh, he was almost able to use the Kirov to get some damage. Now Kian going to take a, take a chance to grab a bite on the backside here. Marco has to sell the MCV. Wow. Marco wow, for sell. some reason, Marco's economy in shambles. Kuhn's economy perfect. Pops IC defensively, which means that Kuhn pop, could pop it offensively, kill off all the tanks that aren't IC'd, and what is going to be oh left at the end God. of the day? Very even numbers. Oh Holy my. shit, this game is really, really close. Marco Very out, even Marco, take numbers, but Kuhn just a little bit ahead. Marco out in MCV. I mean, Marco now out in MCV. And what is going on here today? This is not the kind of, I mean, we've talked about, it's one thing for Kian to have a trick play, to know a map better, to, you know, get have better micro. But the macro, that's what Marco's here for. And so to see, Ma uh, see Marco falling behind on his builds and stuff, a bit surprising here as Kian puts another one on the board, brings us to 2-0. Going to play to Marco's advantages for sure. Can Kian do it again? Or will Marco finally get a point on the board? Best of seven. So the show, I mean, the show is certainly going to go on here. Best of seven. Uh, stock with a follow. Thank you, buddy. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll be honest with you guys. You know, both these guys, again, have made it to the championships uh, for both the Blitz game mode and Yuri's Revenge game mode. And I, you know, I was trying to think, I'm like, which one should we play first? And I specifically chose Yuri's Revenge because I figured if Marco, I thought Marco was a pretty heavy favorite. And I knew that if Mar if Kian lost that, he could still maybe try to keep some momentum and think, okay, I can beat him in Blitz and still have momentum. Because I kind of thought if we did Blitz first and Kian lost, Kian would like kind of be disheartened because Yuri's Revenge would be harder. Anyway, so I had this completely wrong in my head because Kian comes out the gate with a quick two on the board. Now, we've seen this uh, from Marco before. Marco likes to open conscripts here. I haven't seen this much from other players, but I really like this opening. He opens a batch of conscripts, tries to sneak down and harass that oil. This dog scout, so Kian will see it. Um, but yeah, Marco can still put some early pressure on these conscripts. Uh, a very underutilized unit, the conscripts. Absolutely. And in a map that you start with two oils and you start with two gem patches and there's no way you could spend that money fast enough at the beginning of the game anyway. So you could easily spam 15 conscripts out and not go broke at any point. Marco always trying to capitalize on that situation. Q and of course responding here with a forward war factory to bring out the tanks to defend this oil. Oil's very important, oh, endless money flow for, for free and a miner out to defend against conscripts as well. Can Marco get some damage done here as a drone comes in for the rhinos? The does drone a, goes down. Does counter that drone nicely. Now he's gonna have to try to reroute those two sentry guns are gonna cause you Another issues. miner! The mi Double what? miner. And another sentry gun, so Kian does not want to give up this expansion. We've seen it before. Having to am amputate one of your these expansions early on puts you way behind. So I like Kian's fully committed to this and taking Marco's push here very seriously. Now a fourth sentry gun. Now talking about value there, Snark, even if Marco doesn't get anything here, making him build four sentry guns, uh, that's a little bit of value in itself early game. Yeah, but what an incredible defensive from Kian. Going, Marco's on his doorstep with two rhinos, and he's making two miners out of a forward war factory in a very <laughs> dangerous position, and he defends with only the cost of the sentry guns. Yeah. Didn't lose a single miner there. Marco lost, all, you know, sentry guns didn't cost that much more than all the conscripts. So a beautiful lesson in defense there from the Octo Kid, proving he knows how to be defensive as well as offensive here. And uh, if we do a quick miner count here, Marco might be disappointed. Yeah, and Marco going to come back down with pressure on that bottom right again. And I think one thing to be said here, Marco, Marco may be a bit predictable. I mean, you saw Kian knew exactly what was coming there. I knew what was coming. I've only seen Marco play this map a couple times um, on my stream, and I knew it was coming. So Kian certainly knew it was coming. He was prepared for it, and he had a plan. We've talked about the starting oils in this map. Your economy early on allows you to 
to just pump these sentry guns uh, on on a, a lot of maps. If you build this many sentry guns early on, it can put you behind. On this map, eh, Kian seems fine pumping these sentry guns. Indeed, indeed, and again, a beautiful lesson in defense there. Starting out completely out tanked, oh. but beautiful tank control. Backside Stopping here. Marco getting anything done, and now Kian going in on the backside. Kian backside, Marco right there with the sentry gun now. Uh, no tanks, and Marco just going to send it down field. So Kian's and Marco only defending with the tanks coming out of the War Factory. Marco is sending a split now, bottom left. Kian now pumping drones. He gets one drone and sentry gun out. Uh, now Kian coming up the right side, going to go out those miners. What can Marco get done? Marco getting heavily droned. Kian knew that attack was coming. He switched over to drones quickly. Yeah, so Kian expecting this. And look at the Michael clicking down those rhinos very quickly. Kian getting some value, but two War Factories down for Kian already. Who is going to win this base trade? Can Marco get the MCV? That is the value he needs Marco here. Who doesn't go On for the, the MCV? On the flip side, what is Kian going to get? Kian getting miners left, right, and center, clicking down those rhinos. Marco not going for the drone. And Marco now Kian not building down drones. that MCV. Oh, yeah, Marco didn't build the drones. He didn't. He's not building from the barracks. And Marco, uh, and Marco now going for the MCV. Marco will get Kian's MCV, so it is going to be... It's pretty classic base trade here but you gotta think are the drones the dr where are the drones because Kewen has enough drones all of marco's tanks are good and q still has this mcv what the fuck i yeah why is why did marco why did marco not what? take the mcv no q just has to go back lay back and relax and chill and defend and build some war factories and miners and he's fine marco has to make a move now or it's over Marco, interesting, deciding to go for the economy instead of the MCV. And Kewen getting the MCV and the economy. Marco is in big trouble here. Uh, yeah, and, um, you know, I, I, you know, we've, <laughs> we've certainly seen players, um, play head games. We've seen players troll people. We've seen players, um, you know, mess with things in a series, you know, just to, like, mess around one point or something. Uh, especially when they feel like they're they're way ahead or they're going to easily beat their opponent. But um, this is a best of seven, and Marco has now lost three. So if Marco's if Marco thought he was going to get through this one running half speed, uh, it's certainly time to 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 turn things on because um, well Marco's lost this point, obviously, and uh, yeah. he's going to have to figure out things quick in this series. Absolutely, absolutely, it is. 3-1 for the Octo Kid. So question questionable decisions there from Marco, but Kewen at the same time, Kewen is just on point. Perfect. And, and if we take Perfect. your guys' predictions here, 80% of you before the game started putting it on Marco. This is give you guys kind of a feeling of what's happening here to see Kian up 3-0. Um, so Marco, yeah, I mean, and the weirdest thing here is that um you know, there's some players, you know, there's some players who troll, right? Like, I mean, players like like Andy in a best of 15, he'll, you know, one point, you know, kind of troll around and then, you know, try to like some flare points, right? He'll throw some points. He'll try to be dramatic, come back. He'll do stuff like that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things. Some players choke. So, you know, there's a lot of random things that can happen. Marco doesn't really fit in any of those categories. Like Marco is like, as like the moral pillar of our community, like a consistent player. We talked about him. He's played so long. He doesn't really make mistakes. And so to see what's going on right now is, um, I, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know what the word is for it. Keen with an early MCV move, going to head up top right. Um, I don't, I'm not really sure what we're seeing here, Snark. Yeah, shocking, astonishing, astounding. I, I, I honestly, it's, 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 it's something I never thought I would see. Of course, you never, ever count the goat out. And uh, if there's one map that no one plays like Marco, it is called to speak. He's got a very unique kind of strategy here. Now, this is a map where that requires skill because you gotta you gotta expand. You you start in a base that is very limited, and your expansion points are always very exposed, which means map control rules on this map. I think a map that is very diverse and actually plays very nicely into Marco's strengths here. And we're going to see him grab map control early here, not go too heavy on the miners. Early, sorry, that, that's Kian actually. Marco, okay, so Marco now, after second War Factory expanding, this is Marco's build. He's going to go, he's going to expand the gems, get that money, but he's going to be ahead on the War Factories. He's going to outtank his opponent. I love Marco's build on this map. Let's see if he could make it work. Down 3-1 to the Octokid. Not an easy situation to be in. 
Yeah, we're either gonna see we're either gonna see the weirdest comeback of all time or the weirdest sweep in all time. Uh, and then and then after that, we're gonna see these guys play blitz, and who knows what's gonna happen in that? If 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 so far today is any indication. Um, yeah, I mean, in that last point, you know, you could go back and like Marco did a few things wrong, but what's interesting is like. The first, if you go back, that first point, Kian pulled ahead in a tank battle with with pure micro. Um, and so it's interesting, like, Marco is making, we have seen more mistakes than normal from Marco, but Kian's also doing a lot of things right. Kian's just dialed in, man. I don't know. This is very Everything odd. right. He's yeah. playing on point. He's playing like a robot. Game theory optimal red alert to action. Uh, and you love to see it here. So both players are going to see uh, eh, the action coming here. Kian heading downfield. Both players, dogs and rhinos, looking pretty even here. Um, we got Marco on three war factories. Kian on three. So very, very similar builds. Pretty similar economies here as well. Marco slightly ahead on money, but um, very, very even. And Marco has been on uh, more war factories for just a little bit longer. So he's a tiny, tiny bit, like probably one tank ahead, no more. But Kian, the one who's grabbing map control here, and he's going to be the one you know, making the first moves and Marco's gonna have to respond here. So back and forth, back and forth, kind of threatening the MCV top left. He's like, well, I could go up to your MCV at any point. But Marco saying, you want to take my MCV? I'm gonna take your base. No, Marco goes back to defend. Marco back to Holy defend. Holy shit. And Kian, okay. And Kian, you know, and this is a tricky position too. Kian kind of coming from that higher ground. If he can catch Marco out of position, you can use the cliff to shoot down on, down on him a little bit. Neither player feeling too confident here. Uh, neither player out tanking or a big fodder advantage. We are going to see a little split here from Marco. Marco going to send four tanks downfield, pulls the rest back to defend. Kian now forced to adjust. Uh, oh, Kian with his own split on the backside. Yeah, Marco needs to move into position to defend his miners. He does not want to lose a miner here, and he's doing exactly that. Kian get threatened top and bottom. Now we know Kian's uh, API is insane. And now Marco expanding with his MCV to the bottom position. Kewen's gonna have to consider an expansion at some point as well for his economy. And now Kewen grouping all of his tanks together. He out tanks Marco in this one group. Marco's other tank group is out of position. Kewen not pushing oh. in though. Heading towards the bottom here. Oh, oh capitalizing Marcos. on that situation. Marco's tanks get strung out. Marco's tanks get strung out. Kewen continuing to push, but. Oh, in the. No sentry gun from Marco. Wow. Marco holds wow. it. Wow. And very nice Beautiful for Marco. Defense there. That war wow. factory pumping right on the front lines. And Marco to pull ahead there, very impressive because you saw his tanks, the reinforcements coming over that hill got pretty strung out. Still not going to be enough. Kian going to split those three, just try to try to get desperate here. But the MCV's already moved. So Kian tries yeah, to go for the Marco MCV top left. Marco immediately primaries that war factory in the top left. Yep, so now he's building out of that so and a sentry gun. Oh, and Kian <laughs> loses the MCV oh. on the backside. Oh, damn. Comeback Marco. city, boys. Kian. Here we go. This is why he's the GOAT. He's everywhere all at once. QN can't keep up with the experience of the GOAT here as the GOAT defends perfectly. Another split from QN. And GG is called. Wow. <laughs> so Phenomenal. Mar Marco one up now. Marco one up. So Can he take home another win? Yeah, and a little bit of momentum there, and certainly, um, certainly, Kian. I mean, you kind of feel the jitters for Kian, right? To be three up on Marco, like you're proud of yourself, but you're also kind of like, what the fuck is going on? And uh, obviously, you start feeling that creep. I mean, there's some players who feel better when they're backed into a corner. They they would rather try to play catch up. Um, being ahead and trying to hold momentum um, is can be as difficult as trying to gain back momentum for some players here. So Kian, um, Kian still he still got a nice buffer up three one here. And a quick reminder, guys, uh, this was part of the world. World Cup, but hey, we do we do a tournament every month. This we got a January tournament, four hundred dollars in prizes going out. Fish, a big sponsor for that tournament. Appreciate you, Fish. Uh, so the January event number fifteen for the Red Alert Two World Series. Um, it's going to be a good one, guys. So we're kicking that off. We're finishing up. This is the December tournament, kicking things off in January and February and March. Every month we got a tournament. As always, we're always looking for players. If you guys want to join the fun, regardless of your skill level, we have different divisions. We have regular Red Alert Two, Yuri's Revenge, and Blitz. Come play. I recommend it. RedAlert2.com. You can find the link to join my Discord. That's how you sign up for the events. Uh, as always, too, we're all, we're all looking for streamers. If you want to get into streaming, you want to start streaming some games, we have a lot of lower division games that we just don't have enough streamers for right now. So if you're a new streamer, you can team up with the new players. New players, new streamers, more people streaming, watching, and playing Red Alert 2. RA2 to the moon. That's what it's all about. All right, Snark, what do we see so far in this game?
All right, to the moon, absolutely. So both players, again, they are going to stick to their corners of the map. No early move to the center, which is interesting. A double War Factory opening for Kion, which means he is going to have to micro his miners perfectly. We're going to watch. He, like, he does hit zero, and that does happen with the double War Factory opening. And look at him click down that drone. Yep. Kion with a perfect micro there. Can he get his own drone in is the question, or does it go down? But yeah, double War Factory opening. Marco going for a more conservative opening here. You're going to see he's going to be... F faster on the miners in the beginning, QN should be able to catch up here on the miners. Although Marco out with his second war factory pretty quickly, so five miners for five miners, and uh, stretching to the gems in the center of their side of the map here. Another drone out for Marco. He's going to try and get some value with that. So they're going to go heavy on the eco, like we've seen in previous games, and it's going to come down again. In these, it's it's funny. Usually, I would say this map is Marco's advantage, but in this series. On the more macro maps, Kion has actually been doing better. And Marco on the crazy micro map, Coldest Peak, with all the splits, actually beat out the Octokid at his own game. So I, I, I don't know when the tables turned and when Marco became more of a micro and Kion <laughs> became more of a macro, but... Hard to really uh, look say. Look at the amount of miners there. Look Whoa. at the amount of miners. Yeah, both players. And that's what the big thing is. The first time you see the Rhino come out, okay, so now we have Rhinos coming out for Mark. Oh, and Kian. Okay, so now switching over to Rhinos. Massive economies of, between them. And, uh, of course, on this map, the hot zone right in the center here. Who's going to move the MCV? Who's going to take control of the center? How do you counter it if your opponent beats you there? Uh, that's generally kind of the crux of this map is banging out for the center. So far, though, both players, yeah, just these base stretches, almost identical, uh, identical builds here. Uh, Mark with more money in the bank. But we shall see these first. We've seen these first engagements swing these games pretty fast series so far as well. Um, only about 30 minutes in, four points. These ones have been going fast. Yeah, yeah, very, very fast, very decisive from these players. Not, not very long, strung out games. Every game has been, well, usually decisive for QN, except for that one yeah. incredible showing from Marco here. Yeah. And uh, again, macro, 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 macro. Five war factories for both of these players. Tons of fodder, tons of rhinos. Who can micro their economy better? Who can get more money, more war factories, more rhinos, more dog, more fodder, and then come into a huge clash of the titans here and win the tank fight that will decide the game is usually the name of the game in the games that start like this. Yeah, we've seen it before. You know, oftentimes, you know, in these games, too, you'll kind of see, you know, little in and out, little battles. But we've seen so far these big engagements early on just completely swing things. And both players just continuing to bolster up before they bang it out. And, of course, the um, keeping up with the macro on the back end while you keep an eye on your tanks in the center. You don't want your opponent to be able to jump in and get a leg up there. Um, but, yeah, it's interesting. You know, I wonder, you know, Marco's not the kind of player who usually has to adjust his strategies uh, mid-series. He usually knows who he's playing, and he's usually in the driver's seat. So um, you got to wonder if Marco's thinking, like, damn, I underestimated him, or, you know, Kian's doing this really good today. you got to see, think if Marco's trying to look to, to switch things up or if Marco's playing differently than normal. But so far, it looks pretty tried and true. It looks like Kian with a, yeah, pretty even so far. Four, five. Six, uh, so a slight War Factory advantage for Marco. And economy yeah. advantage. Yeah, and Kion uh, moving his MCV a little bit to the second level. They're expanding just a tiny bit here. Uh, getting more of the ore and the dogs and the rhinos are going to be endless stream of dogs and rhinos here. And yep. with these huge fights, right? This is something that only if you played millions of games do actually have experience in these huge fights. Yeah, these are the right. ones. These in, in in low body situations obviously become uh, for a, a normal mortal player. That's when the micro really comes. In these ones, at lower levels, you, it's just it's kind of like flipping a coin. You smash your heads into each other and see who's who's the last man standing. But uh, with these guys, there actually is a lot of little nuances that they can do. How they're going to control their dogs and their tanks. Tr of course, trying to use your tanks to run over the enemy dogs. Um, and both players with the MCB moves. Look at this. Look at this stare down right now. And you feel the pressure. Marco, of course, cannot lose this point. If Marco loses this he does lose the world cup oh tanks get a little bit strung out there kian tries oh, to take boy. a bite Ki oh boy <laughs> okay kian backing off here marco trying to split off a few tanks up to the top left position here two, he's though. gonna try and get some value but but all kian has to do is primary a war factory up there and he'll out tank marco split in a second it's not gonna help him and kian yeah. is so quick on primarying the other war factories look at these desolators coming in getting good value one deso could kill a hundred dogs and and that's it it's game over because if you don't have the fodder in the fights it's done so both players now move to the center. Like you said, the name of the game is when they start diverging into the, the center here. And a big engagement. The Desolators for Kian. These, the Desolators could swing this game. Marco has to be so careful right now. 
And, and Kian using those desolators to zone out the backside. Oh. Marco's tank's oh, getting Mark's strung out. Position. Mark Marco got a position. Oh, Marco gonna Mark split up his tanks. What is QN's gonna do? He desolates oh, his own tanks. QN with a oh, terrible desolator. Desolating a huge group of his tanks, but now moving in to bolster his army. He's gonna go all in. Marco moving in. So it's gonna come to a sort of a base trade situation. Holy shit. A million gifted subs <laughs> as we talk. What's going on, Ivor? My head is imploding. QN pushing in. Marco, Marco drives right past the MCV. He forgets where he's going with his backside slit. Marco sells his MCV. Marco now winning the engagement on the right side. Is he going to win? If he holds on the right side, on the left side, his tanks are now uncontested again. He, but he's getting oh. heavily droned on this backside and not oh clicking down God. the MCV. But he but he defends. Marco defends after selling his MCV. He doesn't have any money, though. You in the one with the economy. Marco needs to get good value. He needs to get it now. But with the desolators and the drone defense, Marco's going to have a hard time getting anything done. Making conscripts, Marco? You don't have the money for for that and he has desolators they're not gonna help you what are you doing marco what is going on here the drone defense from qn still has his mcv he could still make refineries his economy is better here and look at that deso come down here beautiful marco moving his tanks out of position very very nicely here oh the drones are going down but that desolator getting so much value the Desolator's getting a lot of value. Kian's still up in MCV right now. Uh, yeah. Tank numbers. Yeah. The tank numbers are the elite. If Marco can split up his tanks now and get serious value, Kian could be wiped out of the game. What can Marco do here? Can Kian really defend all this with drones? How's his army looking? Is, is it growing at all? Sends one drone in, gets a tank, gets a veteran. Very nice. But the, t the, the tank numbers are going for Kian. Marco needs to move in and he needs to make a move. Of course, QN now doesn't have the MCV. He does sell it, he does still have a radar, so he can still do the Deso and the drone defense here. Marco needs to go in and get value now. Yeah, Marco's got to try. I mean, both players down in MCV now. Uh, that was a really, really wacky turn of events. Got very odd there. You thought you would have thought Kian's, um, Kian's drones would have been enough to, I don't know. Yeah, very interesting. This is insane. Can Kuhn defend this? I, I feel like Marco has this game, Ivor. He's going to push it. He's trying to use the miners. He kills down the desolators and the infantry. Really clever move from QN there. Really quick on his feet there. But the, the amount miners. of rhinos for Marco is huge. There is just so many rhinos here. I don't see what QN can do. And with that elite giving Marco the final edge to kill QN. And it is over. Another win of the board for the GOAT game that was Ivor that was so close so intense so much going on I'm having trouble keeping track of these guys okay and so okay so I just want to point something out here um Marco in that last Marco is this is not okay Marco is fucking with Kian Marco is not just playing this game Marco is fucking with Kian in that last point the way that Marco when Marco started building conscripts and refused to destroy Kian's MCV that's like that was like that's not like, oh, I'm going to beat you. That's like, I'm so far ahead of you right now. You think you're ahead? You think you're in the driver's seat? I'm messing with you. Like, Marco is playing seven different layers of this game right now. I mean, you saw him just dancing around Kian's MZV. Like, messing with Kian. Building conscripts into desolators. I don't even know. I mean, I, Marco's I, messing <laughs> with Kian, right? I, 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 would he? He's I, down? I think Three, one. the only explanation is that Marco is literally playing insane head games with Kian right now. That last what? point, he had he had eight tanks dancing around a naked MCV while he was getting droned. It didn't make any what? sense. Really? Marco doesn't make mistakes like oh, that accidentally, right? I mean, of why for that's that's. <laughs> I mean, if he if he's doing that, he's got okay a balls the size of of Marco of a planet Earth, dude. I mean. <laughs> Holy shit. No I, way, man. You don't take a series that is this series, this series of the year, the final closing of the year, the biggest cash prize here, the, the finals, and you fuck around like that? No, no way, Ivor. <laughs> you think? Here's the thing. I think it's kind of like Ed. You know, Ed, Ed's been playing the game for 20 years now, and sometimes Ed's like, yo, I've been playing the game for 20 years. I'm going to only build V3 rockets. I'm bored. And I think Marco, he's played in so many big games, so many hype matches, so many tournaments. I think Marco woke up this morning and was like, fuck it. Not only am I going to win today, I'm going to mess with this kid a little bit. I'm going to let Kian know. Kian's getting a little <laughs> cocky. He thinks he's, you know, he thinks he's, you know, a little hot right now. I'm going to give him a 3-0. And then I'm going to crush him. And I'm going to crush uh. his soul. And I'm going to ride <laughs> that momentum wave. Remember, guys, we have another best of seven between these guys mm. coming up in Blitz right after this. And if Marco <laughs> pulls off a 4-3 upset right now. Oh, my Kian, God. Kian well, would come so disheartened <laughs> to the next series.
<laughs> final boss strats, Kombrucho. That's why he's called oh. the final boss. It's like in Mario, when you think you're beating the boss, all of a sudden your fireballs start making him stronger. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Oh, come on. Nah, I don't know. I don't know if I could swallow that either. <laughs> I mean, that would be next level like Matrix uh, shit going on. Well, I I mean, I, I don't know what other explanation there is for it, but we shall certainly see here. Over to 2-3. Uh, as usual, guys, if you're enjoying the show, if you're catching the, the highlights somewhere, um, YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I know it's annoying that I have to always say that, but I really got to say it. I really got to say it because liking, commenting, subscribing really helps get this content in front of more people. We're trying to get more people to watch this game. Watch the game, play the game, stream the game. That is what it's all about. So catch it on YouTube. Um, throw that stuff in there. It's free for you. Helps me immensely. If you guys uh, are looking for more content after this, the video I posted yesterday, Kian vs. Latov, possibly the best piece of content I've ever created. Likely going to be rivaled by this absurd series, but currently the best piece of content I've ever created right now on YouTube just got posted laptop for Kian versus Kian. I highly recommend it. And again, here we go. Dogs and rhinos oh, to the center okay. line to see what's going to happen. Okay, yeah, these players have been building up. They're, again, pretty even, pretty equal. Marco looking a little bit ahead on tanks here. Kian looking a little bit better on eco, I think, on the microphone. I'm not sure. We're going to have to see Marco all the way down to the third level already. And they are doing what we call the Rhino Dance. Back and forth here, testing each other, looking for an opening, looking for one straight tank. You know, one second you're not watching your tanks and bam, that's one tank down that, you know, he just clicked on it because he noticed you were AFK for a single second here. Players constantly moving back and forth, waiting for their opponent to make just the slightest mistake to come in there and pounce. And Marco with an insane amount of War Factory, he's down to the center, stretching towards Kuin's base, uh, making a beeline like, hey, listen, I'm going to build all the way to your base and I'm going to build in your base and beat you that way that's the way marco's base is looking right now yeah i like that stretch getting down to the center of course uh that map control can be big here sometimes you can sneak a sentry gun into the battle your forward war factor your reinforcements are gonna be that much faster and um i just i just have this feeling like i just feel like kian can't win this point like it doesn't matter if marco accidentally sells his mcv i just feel like kian i just feel like marco like you know what I mean? we've talked about before it's not that marco wants to win this point it's that marco is going to go final boss mode and refuse to lose this point. Like, an absolute refusal. Like, I, I, I just really... Even though, it, like, right now, Kian looks strong to me. Um, I guess, what? how are we? Two, four, six War Factories, two, four... Ah, I mean, it's pretty even. Yep, even, pretty even. But Marco with a forward, forward barracks here to spam out the fodder even quicker into the battlefield. Maybe a radar coming out soon for the desolators to join the fight here he's gonna try and grab that huge gem patch in the center get those yummy juicy gems to boost his economy and look q and following suit putting his own forward barracks here desolator. as the desolator starts coming out here and deso control we've seen the importance of deso control last game q and did deso's own tanks accidentally cost him a great deal here will he have the control this time again one desolator could clear out an entire field of fodder in an instant and that's it you don't have fodder your opponent does and it's over so you really need to be careful when it comes to that qn pushing in here marco backing off qn taking down the barracks get sold and qn bringing in the desolators into position one war factory gets sold marco getting pushed oh back that in. hut oh the hut was big there oh i thought that hut was gonna grab both desolators that would have been huge marco having to be so careful here to protect his fodder uh but kian but yeah Ke wait what happened to kian did Kian's fodder? What happened to all of Kian's fodder? Uh, I must have hit a desolator or something, or they went in and the got sentry, eaten by that dogs. Sentry, oh, that's yeah, that sentry gun from Marco. Oh, Kian putting oh. himself in a position between Marco and his expansion. He's gonna go straight for the oh. MCV, and now Marco sending his own army downfield. Kian's gonna oh get this MCV. A double, triple split here. Both players splitting their tanks into separate groups. Marco sells off his MCV and his expansion. He's gonna try and defend Kian's attack as Marco goes into Kian's base, killing miners left, right, and center. What is going on here? Can Marco defend Kian with his own expansion to the top right position? So Kian still has his MCV. Marco does not. Can Marco? defend Kian bringing in his reinforcements oh, here and the drone defense Kian. from Kian. Marco massively droned on the backside. Kian's MCV is naked uh, top right, but Marco has no way to get over there. Marco having to defend on the backside now. Marco's attacking force heavily droned, and the MCV is not there anyway. Marco now having to bring his miners in as fodder. Were well, that actually those miners, miners actually? Miners going down. Oh my god. Oh my oh, god. Kian wins this. Kian wins this big time. Kian's gonna win it. 
Huyen comes out on top. Huge win for Huyen here. Marco, Marco has one group of tanks. going to try and kill all the miners here. He might get that, but if it comes down to a brace trade situation, there is no way he's going to... Well, he has, does have some drones. It's not going to be enough. Huyen with so many rhinos here is going to die by the war factories. What kind of value can Marco get here? He has his own elite here. Is he going to run back and defend? What is he going to do? Mar does Marco know where Kian's MCV is? He might not know. Oh, and Marco blunders his elite right into QN's tanks, throws it away. And QN with massive tank control here coming out on top. Marco still spamming the drones, but he has only one miner left. His money not looking too hot at all. QN still with four war factories, has his MCV. QN way, way ahead here right now. Wait, does the Ke Octo Kid. Does Kian have any miners? Oh, wait, Kian only has one miner too? There's no way yeah, for Marco Kian to win this. Two war factories. Well, he's repairing his tanks. I mean, he's repairing, using that money to repair tanks. Interesting choice there. But Kyun with a bigger army, more infantry, more drones, an MCV still. Kyun could just start spamming miners and, and possibly be okay. As that one miner there in the top. Kyun still in a much better position here. Not sure what Marco thinks he's planning. The drones chasing down Marco's rhinos. Some of them getting droned here. He's Only got one, he's rhino, got one rhino. He's got one rhino. <laughs> And now Kim builds another refinery. Yeah, this, these drones are gonna clean it up, and it looks That's... like the Octo Kid will take the Yuri's Revenge series versus the Goat. And oh, yeah, you, you gotta expect the GGs coming here from Marco. Uh, maybe he's doing a final head count here to make sure he's not missing anything. But um, yeah, Kian now selling off some buildings. I mean, Kian knows he's up an MCV here, so. Um, yeah, they both these guys really smoked it to the filter. Nothing left to give, but um, Marco going to send it downfield with the conscripts. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Holy moly. And uh, again, QN was just much faster on switching into drones, making Marco pay the price for Mar that base trade situation. Marco taking a Mar little bit longer trying to defend with tanks, and it didn't work for him. Yeah, and so, oh, oh, Marco needed to use those conscripts to avoid the drones. He got two two tanks droned. Two rhinos, yeah, and QN has just been so good with these drones, Ivor. QN has been on point with these drones. GG's called Holy Moly, and you know it's a crazy series when Legend comes into the chat. 4-2... <laughs> Uh, four two for for Kian. Kian winning the Yuri's Re the Yuri's Revenge, uh, World Cup Championship Finals here. Um, I, I I don't really know what we just saw. I think it's clear that Marco underestimated Kian. I think it's clear that Marco was messing with Kian a little bit. Um, but ultimately, um, I mean you can't imagine that Marco Marco didn't want to win it I think Marco kind of underestimated he thought he could go up through get, you know get behind and come back and obviously underestimated the Octo Kid